We got sound. We got sound, y'all. We live. Our producer, Dwayne, is bomb. So, welcome, everybody. Hills to Cleese. How you doing, Harlem? Good. All right. So, as y'all can see, one of our members is missing, but she is at tackle practice tonight for Atlanta Phoenix. So, uh, it was really important for her to go to tackle tonight. She does, you know, sacrifice every Thursday to be here with us. So, tonight she really needs to be there. So, um, shouts out to Atlanta Phoenix and Butter, but we're going to roll right into shoe cam. What's your shoes looking like, Harlem? So cute! Yeah, they baby like blue. You like them? I like them. They're so cute. Did you say they little? They little. Oops. <laughs> so cute, little tiny feet, that little baby shoes. <laughs> um, and I'm just wearing my chucks. Nothing special. Nothing crazy. I'm, I'm always in a pair of chucks. Yeah. Some great ones. And then we're in our overalls, y'all. Could not wait to wear overalls. Like, literally yeah. ordered them. And yours have rips. Mine have rips too. Yeah, mine got rips. Yeah, so we just wanted to wear some overalls, something different, something cute. All right, so we're going to run right into our hot topics. The first hot topic we're going to go into is um, we're going to talk about Alabama. Um, Alabama, flag football for girls, now being sanctioned in high schools, supported by the uh, NFL, Nike. What are your thoughts on that? That's you. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I hope, you know, young girls in Alabama are excited because I'm excited. It makes me wish I was back in high school. I know. You know what I mean? For the opportunity, yeah. you know, to play and it actually be a sanctioned sport. So that's huge. So shout out to Alabama and Nike and the NFL partnering together to make that happen. So it's just yeah. going to it's gonna go crazy. Georgia, hope you're up next. I know, right? That's going to be so crazy because those girls are going to get scholarships. And, you know, it's so yeah. hard for women to get scholarships for sports. I mean, unless you're just like a basketball player or something like that. But the average girl, yeah, it's kind of tough. But, you know, when I think about women's league and I think about how Bama and then now NCB are like the only teams in our league, and really they come to Atlanta because they don't have a league. But how crazy it's going to grow for them over there over the years as these girls come from high school. They're going to have a league over there, and their league going to be strong. And, um, yeah, we're going to have to keep up over here in Atlanta. But I, I know we will because it's already in our high schools. But sanctioned, that's huge. So, shouts out for that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. So, we got some good news here in Atlanta pertaining to, you know, women's flag and high school girls that are looking for opportunity to, you know, play at the next level. So, uh, so May 7th, they're going to be hosting the first ever free Atlanta Falcons NAIA women's flag football showcase. NAIA coaches will be in attendance to scout players. Um, to my knowledge, they'll be doing some agility drills, some one-on-one -on -one drills, some position drills. Uh, so that's May 7th at Mercedes-Benz, and the time is 5 to 8. So if you're in high school, you're a senior, you know, looking for, you know, opportunity to play in college, the next level, get some, you know, some free money, pay for your school, show that's up. Huge. That's huge. When yeah. is that again? That's May 7th. At the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Yo, I'm going out there to sign up. I just want to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. So all you high school girls, um, yeah, go. That's huge. We need to. Po we'll post that. That's that's really big. That's huge. Um, cool. So yeah, shout out to the high school girls. They are making waves, man. Um, and the next one, you know, I want to talk about um Joe Biden. You know, and how you know. Joe Biden just, uh, you know, he sent the memorandum to um, have it passed for um, basically to have um, to have a protection order for Asian Americans uh, against hate crime. Uh, Fifty million in reparations has been passed for Asian Americans. That is, uh, how do you feel about that? Because I was when I saw that, I'm thinking like, home oh, black people been trying to get reparations for oh, over years, right? I was like, okay. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, Asians take a little a little thump for a year. And I don't want to undermine it because people lost their lives. So that's not what right, I'm saying. Right. But in comparison to 400 plus years, it, it, and then you guys are instantly acting, instantly doing something. And he has to pass that law swiftly, like days after. You know what I mean? And it's just like, yeah, we've been, we've been suffering for 400 years, you know, yeah. mentally, emotionally, you know, spiritually. So I was kind of, I mean, I was shocked. But I wasn't shocked. You know, I don't know how to feel about that. Like, I mean, I wasn't surprised. 
Yeah, it's kind of, it's like, what do we as a people, and I know one thing that you and I talked about was, um, you know, black is color. So a lot of times I don't even say, like, I'm black. I'd be like, I'm African because it's not a nationality. And we're talking about, no, we are going there. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going there because I Googled and I did some more research on what right. you were teaching me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think people need to know because so many people don't know. Right. So I think, like, you know, first off, we're not black. Black is a color. That's a crayon. And, and black by law means no right. So we're Moorish American. Right. So research, what's our nationality? Like when people say they're black, it's like you're not black, you're not a crayon. Like even our skin is brown, it's not It's not black. Right. So, you know, I think people, our people need to, you know, research our history. A lot of it has been washed, erased. You know, we've been mm-hmm. everything but what we truly are. You know, we went from being colored, Negro, African, African American, you know what I mean? Right. We've been called everything other than what we are, you know what I mean? So just research who you are, you know? You got to think about Asi- Asians, what they come from Asia, Jamaicans, Jamaica, Dominicans, Dominican Dominican Republic. Republic, yeah. You know, they all stem from their nationalities where right. we just black. Right, right. And if that makes sense to you, then oh. I don't know how it makes sense to you, but right, right. we're Moors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, it's yeah. it's a good thing. So I I think I'm excited to see what we as um, more people do for um, to push forward about our reparations. Because I seen a clip about Kamala Harris, and at first I was excited, like okay, you know, and she used her sorority, you know, to really push and the black vote and things like that. But then you see her saying things like, oh, you know, I didn't say I'm not gonna do anything for black people specifically. Like, huh? Okay, got it. But black people got you in office specifically. You know, that's why they in Georgia fighting to change laws so hard. So it just, it, but you know what? I'm going to touch and get off. So, um, yeah, because I feel some type of way about that, when, especially when, you know, people, when we, you know, we, we do certain things, you know what I mean? It's always, it's always getting, getting the short end of the stick. And, it, and a lot of times it's by our own people. So it's like, ugh. But anyway, all right. So let's switch to, switch to something a little bit more light. Um, y'all know all week long, all month long, we're talking about April wedding kickoff season, the season of love. So our question this week is, um, and this was so interesting when this t- when this question came up and we came up with the question, but, you know, when you think about athletes and how, you know, just endurance and how, you know, they're just, like, in better shape. So the question is, are athletes better lovers than the average person? <laughs> you gonna go first or you want me to? You go first! <laughs> <laughs> I think so. You know, I think I think athletes are just natural better lovers because, um, I mean, a lot of reasons. Uh, stamina. Um, we understand discipline we mm. understand sacrifice you know everything that pertains to a relationship um we understand teamwork if you're an athlete you used to you know doing what's best for the team so with your spouse you just you're not selfish you tend to be less selfish because you're always thinking i mean at least i am you know i can't speak for everybody but i just think all around athletes are better lovers you know we're good with time time management and i for the most part i think we're selfless you know what i mean but I mean, what do you think? I think I mean, all those things are great points beyond my mind went to sex first. Like, that's, <laughs> where, that's where my mind went. I'll be stamina. honest. Yeah, it was the stamina. It's like, oh, yeah, because we can last long and we can do this and we, we're more athletic. We can do tricks. We can, you know, all that stuff. But all the other things that you mentioned make so much sense. It did. That's where my mind went, man. But all the other things make so much sense. And those are the things that are the foundations of relationships and that, you know, that really, really, really make relationship last outside of, like, the bedroom. So I agree. I agree. I think yeah. athletes better love us. So get y'all an athlete or a girl who understands sports. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So we're going to shout. Did you go live? I didn't. My phone was acting up, but I'm about to go live in a minute. Okay, cool. So five on your live. So I'll just shout out 10 just for you. Okay. So we could do 10. So I'm just, it's the first 10, y'all. So um, shouts out to Alicia X, X88, Juice78, Coach Rick. One killer cam. I like her. I need to meet her in person. One oh. killer cam. <laughs> we need to meet in person because I think I know she is. Um, but she's always showing showing love. So, um, Coach John Johnson, Superstar Baller twenty three, Cornbread sixty nine, Exit three JG, 
B Watts to Roski 79, Tish 110. That's what they do. 11, Ariel. I think that's like 10, y'all. So that shots out five on your live. But I did 10. Five for her, five for me. Thank so you. there you go. Yeah. All right. So. We're going to roll right into um, last week's games. Man, and I heard that you stayed out there because your games were, like, really gapped, so you got a chance to actually catch a lot of games live. Um, so we're just going to go right into that segment, Talk Your Ish, Boo. And, uh, ooh, and we're about to talk about all of uh, last week's games. And it was some great games last week. Great games. Who did y'all play? We played Stallions. We had the Stallions at 11:20. That was our first game. It was a good game. Um, okay, all know, right. Some re- the refs made some, you know, but they're humans. You know, a lot of people. Who is that ref? Somebody said, and I got a few messages about this one ref. Tony, is that the name Tony? Oh no. I think it is something like that. I'm gonna ask Ed about it. They were like, oh, get him out of here. But hey, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about, um, so let's start with, okay, so y'all's game was good, a little, mm-hmm. little rough, pretty rough with the refs. Yeah, I mean, they made a call, they, they, they made a, they called pass interference on me, and it clearly wasn't, even, even the wide receiver said, you know, it was a good play, Harlem, you know, mm-hmm. um, so, I mean, but refs are human, I, I was upset, I'm not gonna lie, I was, I was very upset, the call ended up being overturned, which it should have been, mm-hmm. um, but it was a great game, you know. Stallions, they're great. I think we won 12-0, but it was a good game. They put up a good fight. 12-0, yeah, that's a real good fight. Shout yeah, out to is. the Stallions. They're, they look the different. Stallions. They ain't the same Stallions. No, um, let's talk about this Code Red Rebels game, 0-20. to 20. Um, Did you expect anything different? Um, you know, after seeing Code Red be really aggressive with X Factor, I expected them to come out and, like, really try to intimidate the Rebels and just try to, like, rough them up. But I know that our Player of the Week and our Player of the Week came from that game. So we can kind of pause, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll go right into that right before we go into People vs. Podcast, the Player of the Week. But it came from that game. I I did expect them to be, like, more. I I expected them to at least score. score. Yeah. At least score. I did. Um, but the Rebels is a tough team. They're doing good this season, too. So. Yeah. Just all right. They're 5 and 1. Rebels. Yeah, they're, they're up there. So, um, yeah. all right, cool. So, we're going to go right into the next game Stallions versus Primetime 6 7. If that wasn't close, it'll tick you off. That was a good game. That was a good game. I feel like Stallions had their opportunities to win that game. Mm-hmm. Um, but Primetime's a good team. I mean,. Yeah, but that game could have went either way, you know. But I just think prime time, obviously, you know, they wanted a little bit more. You know, those games are hard to yeah. lose when you lose by one point. That's, that's a tough, tough. one. Yeah. That's like that's I don't tough. even want to go out to eat with y'all after the game. I'm good. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> like personally, I, I have a whole attitude. Like y'all need me an hour because I got an attitude. All right. So the next one, um, NTB Wolfpack versus Arsenal, zero to twenty-one. Expect. Yeah. I can't wait to see NTB Wolfpack in action. I'm a little bit disappointed with their whole season so far. I really thought, like, they would at least, you know, win at least two or three or four. And, I, and this might be me just based on their area. I just feel like you coming from an area that is, um, you know, y'all cow tipping all day. Not really. It's a joke. But y'all, y'all should be like, I thought they were going to be able to dominate physically. But um, nonetheless, it is like their first season in the league. So they get a lot of a lot of slack there just to warm up to it. Um Primetime versus the Tigers, zero to six. Mm. And this was game of the week for a reason, obviously. Yeah. Primetime struggled. It's like watching that game, it was like Tigers kept pushing them back. But it was like mental errors on the on, on primetime. You know what I mean? Uh, Tigers defense was aggressive. I felt like the quarterback was kind of flushed a little bit. Okay. Again, they had opportunities. But, I mean, defensively, Tigers was just on it. You know, okay. they ran Tigers is there. You know, they throw in Tigers is attacking. So, yeah, you know, uh, I expect the prime time to at least score. Didn't happen. Um, yeah. Interesting thing about yeah. that game is Coach Milton was actually coaching from a live feed. He had to coach from a live because he was out. 
this week. Um, he'll be back next week because I was like, oh, what if he's not back against Bama? How's he going to coach that through a lot? And he coaches the offense for that team. So, and then Coach Herm mainly coaches the defense. So, do you think that has something to do with, like, the offensive coach wasn't there, but the defensive coach, that's why their defense was so aggressive because he was there, you know, just kind of balancing out? No? Okay. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. But taking that from primetime, yeah. Good. They, they're real aggressive. Real aggressive. And primetime's defense has been good, too, because they only yep. scored six on them. So. Yep. Um, coach Red is a good coach, though. Shout out to Coach Red. Coach Red. Hi, Coach, coach Red. Red. I don't know him, but I, 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 I can see what primetime's doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know him, but I, 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 his work is showing through the girls. So. No, yeah. Um, Storm versus Arsenal, 0-12. Expected. Ex- <gasps> Expected. It, uh, uh, Storm... Holding Arsenal was a good thing, though, because I expected Arsenal to score more on Storm. I did. But to see Storm, like, hold it down like that, Mm -hmm. that was exciting. Um, Stallions versus APOC, we just talked about that game, 0-12. to Um, Rebels versus NCB Wolfpack, 22-0. Rebels was slapping heads this week, well, last week. 21-0, 22-0. They didn't let anybody score on them all weekend. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Oh, okay, Rebels. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, Code Red versus Lady Warriors. Now, this was a really good game. This was a spotlight game of the Ooh, week. I was excited, that one. Okay, let's talk about it. Six to 16. Man, I feel like in the first half, I felt like Code Red had the momentum. They actually had, I felt like, an opportunity they, they they had an opportunity to beat the Warriors mm-hmm. and that's real okay I just don't know what happened in the second half like they came out just flat okay like the first half they came out ton of energy running the ball you know catching short passes and even after a pass getting two three yards like real confident and not just the second half it was just flat like no energy mm. and the Warriors came out like listen we ain't losing this game Mm. And once that momentum shift, it was just like Reggie probably said one yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but the Cole Red looked good the first half of that game. I was like, oh, wait, I'm not. I think Cole Red scored first. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. That'll drive your momentum. Yeah, I think Cole Red scored first. So I was like, whoa, okay. And if I'm not mistaken, that would be their first score of the season. Mm. Yeah. 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 It is. Okay. So then that that must have th- drove them straight through the roof. But yeah, then maybe. you're saying second yeah. half, second it kind of went down. Like, nah, We're not having that. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Shouts out to those Warriors. Great job, ladies. Um, the next one is X Factor versus Storm, six to zero. Uh, X Factor beat Storm. Yeah. Yeah. The, I don't think the people predicted that one though. Well, no, the people did predict that one. Okay. Yeah, that was an interesting one. Um, okay. I, I don't think I. I think I was 50-50 on that one. I, th- I thought that one could go either way because X Factor is so new. Um, but they had been performing really good. They, I think in a season or two, they're going to be dominant if they have that same group of girls. X Factor. Um, yeah, X Factor. Okay. Just looking at those girls. I'm not, I'm not even sure why they're not dominating now. Um, but we're going to chalk it up to their new, and we got to give them that, that space to grow. Um, the next one, the Tigers versus DOA, 14-0. Um. Yeah. DOA struggling right now. Yeah. They're struggling. Yeah, cause that's I mean, the Tigers shocking one. Supposed to win. They're supposed to win. But yeah. DOA struggling. It's hard to watch sometimes. So because it's, they got yeah. talent. They got the talent. I just think sometimes you gotta take your personnel and <laughs> just, uh, like, the way I said coaching. <laughs> I don't wanna say it's all coaching, but I just think that. You know, I'm going to put people in positions to be successful. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? To give us a chance. Right. Sometimes certain plays, it just don't make sense. Right. But they got the athletes. They got the speed, you know? Yeah. It's just, you know, I don't know. They're well, struggling, though. Have they won a game this year? They actually just won their first game, DOA versus X-Factor 6-0. Which is interesting, because oh, yeah, now I want to, okay, yeah. That's no, DOA won 6-0. So their first win. Their first win. And DOA is, uh, we'll look at the rankings. Um, okay. We'll look at the rankings, but they're they're at the bottom. 
uh, the OAS, yeah. which is and we rank we rank them pretty high. high. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then APOC versus Lady Warriors, twenty one zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm better. I'm better because you know, you know, you know that Storm game. Look at that Harlow. Uh, what Storm game? We ain't played Storm game. Played them this week. I'm sorry, Cole Red oh, game. Cole it was that Red. Cole Red game. I was like, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> listen, I didn't even play wide receiver. Okay. It's Cole Red. You know, I'm at running back, so. And you I mean, ran it back for 40 points. Y'all no, did. we didn't know. No, no, listen, the 40 <laughs> points, you know, you know. So I know. Like, like Butter said last week, eight pockets working on. Okay, right, so. I got y'all. All yeah. right, so let's talk about all the games we saw this week. Player of the week, play of the week. So it had to be Spellman from the Rebels. I mean, she caught a, a simple slant. Like, it was just a slant. Yeah, it was like off the line. line. Off the line slant. <laughs> Ran it all the way back. Ran it all the way back. I saw so, that. Sometimes, you know, the simple plays, you know, be the plays that put points on the board. So shout out to Spellman. Yeah, yeah shout out to Spellman. Spellman. Athletic, so. Congratulations, girl. Um, that's our player of the week. Player of the week. All right, so um, let's take a look at the standings real quick, and then um, we'll go through the standings. Standings with butter. Um, <laughs> st- standings with butter. Hold on, let me do it in my butter voice. Um, look a little different this week, right? Yeah, they do. They look a little, a little, a little different. Um, hold on, two hold teams on. Teams left that's undefeated, right? Yeah, that's or is it three teams? Bama. So, Bama. Apop and Tiger. So I believe Tiger's number one. They're six and zero. We're six and zero at number two. Bama comes in at four and zero. Um, one of I those know. is gonna change this week yeah, though, absolutely. because Bama and the Tigers play, and that's definitely a game of the week for us. Because mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think they play this Sunday at eleven twenty. Mhm. Um, so yeah. So that's gonna I'm, be. I'm gonna I'm be there. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna be there. Um, so we have Tigers six and zero, Apoc six and zero, Bama four and zero. Cause remember, they when they come, they yeah. play like four, three, Absolutely. and four games at a day at a time. Um, Rebels are up there five and one. Oh wait, I've got to do my butter was eh, prime time out there. Uh, five and one, yeah. and then uh, Arsenal. No, don't do that. Wait, no, that was my butter. That was my uh-huh. good boys. Ah, feels like he can hear me outside. Oh, I'm trying to be butter, y'all. Okay, all right. No, nah, it's a joke. It's not that. It's not. Uh, Stallions are two and four. X Factor two and four. Warriors two and four. Um, DOA one and five. NTB zero and four. Storm and then Cold Red. So both of those two haven't won a game either. Um. All right, yeah, so they haven't won a game either. So that's the midweek. That's the uh, predictions with Butter. So I like being Butter. Butter! Okay, anyway. All right, so um, all right, so the next thing we're going to go into is the... Yeah, these, these games coming up this week, right? Yeah, and then from there we will do a midweek progress report. You know how you were in middle school and you get your midweek progress report and each teacher signs it? Um... Yeah, so, but first we're going to go to People versus the Podcast, and then we'll do the progress report on the coaches. Okay. All right, cool. So, People versus the Podcast this week, we have DOA versus Code Red. Uh, who do you think will take that one? DOA, Code Red. <laughs> I'm going to go DOA. DOA? Yeah, I'm going to go DOA. They should be Code Red. But I think Code Red's going to score on DOA. But I think DOA's going to win with the people say. Um, well, what do you think? Uh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know because DOA been struggling. Um, I think it's definitely going to be a really good game, and I want to see it because DOA has been just struggling. But the people said 79% DOA, 21% code red. Um, Arsenal versus Rebels. That one is going to mm. be a really good one. That's going to be a good one, Arsenal Rebels. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to be a good one. That can go either way. I'm going to say... Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say rebels, but that could go either way. Fifty-five percent of the people said rebels. Forty-five percent said Arsenal. I was a little bit shocked by that. Um, the next game is going to be um, Warriors versus DOA. Who you think? That's gonna be a close one too. Trying to think. 
I think DOA is going to beat them. But it might be like a 7 6 versus Warriors. Well, the people said 53% said DOA, 47% said Warriors. Um, Primetime versus Arsenal. Primetime. Prime, yeah. The so one you say Arsenal? See, that's the thing. The <laughs> and Coach Craig had a birthday too soon. Yeah. Coach Craig, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy oh, birthday. Shout out Rochelle. Happy birthday, Rochelle. I know your birthday was six years ago, but every uh -huh. time I see Rochelle, oh, Halloween, shout me out. Happy birthday, Rochelle. Oh, uh, happy birthday, Rochelle. Uh, well, 72% of the people said primetime, 28% said Arsenal. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked by that, You're too. By that. Well, primetime's been doing great, but Arsenal's a strong team. Yeah, a strong so team. I'm shocked. Who would you vote for in that? I don't know. I can't wait to see the game, though, because I am I haven't really seen. I, I want to just focus on primetime this week and, like, actually watch because they've been leaving. They've been silently assassinating people. So um, the next one, game of the week, is Bama versus Tigers. You know what? That game can go either way. Mm. I feel like if Bama applies pressure and makes Twin have to run and throw, it's a wrap. But if Twin got time to sit in the pocket, it could go Tiger's way. Mm. You know, I think the history with Twin and Bama is just, you know, they kind of flush to her. They they get to her, you know, whatever it is that they're doing. And so, but I still think I th that's tough. That's gonna be a close one. I mean, if I had, if I, if I had to pick, I would probably go with Tigers if I had to pick. But it that really could go either way. It just depends. Okay. Who you got? Um, traditionally, I would definitely go with Tigers hands down. But it's, it's not the same traditional Tigers. And I don't. I'm I'm more of a Lisa. Fan oh, so for Tigers, yeah, okay. twin. I'm not really comfortable yet to put money on the game with with her yeah. yet as the quarterback because she's new. Um, I, I would. I, yeah, Who are you going for? Who you got? I, I, like, only brother, because I'm not. Only because I'm not super comfortable with. Because I'm more comfortable with Lisa. I get that. I, I, you gonna go for Bama? Ooh, I didn't want to say that. Like I didn't really want to <laughs> say that. I think Tigers got an opportunity to beat them. I don't think it's gonna be a it's gonna be a close game. Like it could really go either way. It can, it can. You and know? those are my girls over there at the Tigers. I really, like those are my girls, and they have a lot of veterans there. But that position is so key, yeah, and she's so new to it. And I've seen so many like e, and I'm just I'm not. And and, and in all fairness, you got to give her that time to get used to that whole new system. And so I just, I just want to give her more time before I put money on yeah, that she game. She can get so. it out quick. It changes the game. If, she, if she's scrambling and throwing, yeah, I'm not I'm not making any bets on that game. So um, okay, but the people said 55% said Bama, 45% said Tigers. Um, the next game, Rebels versus Primetime. This is definitely a spotlight game of the week. Mm. That's gonna be a good one. That's gonna be a great uh, one. I think primetime wins. Primetime, primetime, yeah. yeah primetime. Prime Seventy-four percent of the people said primetime. Twenty-six percent said rebels. Um, code red versus stallions. 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 Um, two percent of the people said code red. Ninety-eight percent said stallions. Um, X Factor versus NCB, and this is actually gonna be a good one. I want to see this one. Um, X Factor. X Factor. Seventy-six percent of the people said X Factor. Twenty-four percent said NCB. Um. Let's see. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so that was that one. Bama versus Warriors. Bama. Ninety-six percent of the people said Bama. Four percent said Warriors. Tigers versus NTB. Tigers. I put money on that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ninety-four percent of the people said Tigers. Six percent said NTB. Apoc versus X Factor. Apoc. Ninety-one percent of the people said Apoc. Nine percent said X Factor. Uh, Storm versus NTB. This is another spotlight game of the week. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. But a great I'm one. hoping the Storm win that. Ninety-one percent of the people are with you, and nine percent said NTB. Come on, Storm. I know. Come on, Storm. Come on, Storm. Um, Stallions versus Bama. Bama. Mm-hmm. Twenty-two percent said Stallions. Seventy-eight percent said Bama. Yeah. Um, Storm versus Apoc. Apoc. 14% said Storm, 86% said Apoc. 
So, yeah. So those are People versus the Podcast predictions for games this week. We will definitely be there live. Killer Cam said that Storm is going to win. So we're going to hold you to that, Killer Cam. I'm going to find somebody to make a bet with. So I ain't trying to lose my bet. <laughs> Storm so, against who, though? Uh, NCB. Oh. I believe. Okay. Let me go back and look. But yeah, 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 yeah NCB, NCB, yeah. So um, yeah, I need Storm yeah, to pull that, that one out. They yeah, win. they definitely need that one. That's gonna be a good one. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the midweek progress report for each coach. And basically, the midweek progress report is simply, um, yeah, you know, you get your midweek progress <laughs> report in the school, and it lets you know where your grade is. And at the end of the semester, that's when you get your actual report card with your solid grade. So let's start with the Lady Tigers. As a whole coaching staff, in your class, you know, I'm like lunch class, PE class, you know, recess class. You that's know, me. That's, yeah. But you could be like the math science teacher class. Um, Tigers. Oh, let me be the history. You be history teacher? All right. All right. Tell the truth. Okay. <laughs> All right, so if we had to start with the Tigers. Okay. Um, how would you rank the coaching staff so far midseason? I mean, I think they look great. You got to think they got a whole new quarterback who's learning a whole new system. Mm-hmm. Um, their defense looks great. Mm-hmm. Uh, they communicate. I think they're like the loudest team, too. Like, you know when the Tigers is there. You do know that. <laughs> it's always <laughs> loud. Right? Yeah. But that's good. Like, that works for them. So, I mean, oh, I like yeah, I definitely, you know, give them a B because we always got room for improvement, right? Mm-hmm. Like a B plus, you know? So, okay. In my class. Yeah. It's good to me. In my class, I would give them a B right now. A B. The, for midweek progress report. Yeah. You'll get your final report card. Teachers, your final report cards are coming out at the end of the semester. So this is just midweek progress report. APOC, Coach Jimmy. I don't even know if this one's fair. How would you rate him so far? Uh, Jimmy's doing good. You know, sometimes, you know, as a player, you know, we get frustrated. I know I do. Because it's like, especially against certain teams, I'm like, Coach, just put me at wide receiver. And he just puts me at running back. And it's just like, just put me at wide receiver. Let's, let's finish him. Let's do what we do. But, you know, Jimmy's always thinking bigger, long-term. You know, I don't want to show everybody everything. You know, I get it, smart. But, you know, I love Coach Jimmy. You know, I have to give Jimmy, I mean, I give my coach an A. He's a great coach, and he's just a great guy who loves the game, passionate about the game. Um, yes, he has amazing athletes, right? He got mm-hmm. great athletes, but it takes, a, it takes a, a, a great coach that really understands the game to bring out greatness in players, and I think he does that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In my class, Coach Jimmy, I give you a B plus because until I see APOC actually play like Tigers, Bama, which are basically, to me, the competition for that team in this league, that's when I can really give Coach Jimmy a real great because right now he's doing a great job, but we expect that. Um, So far, yeah. So far, yeah, it's a great job. So that A for me is going to come when we see him play those teams that are on his level. And then okay. see how they do. So that's my grade, my big grade report. Yeah, B plus right now. Um, Bama, Coach Lane, how, what would you give his grade? Um, they look good. I mean, one thing I was surprised, I I, I thought they would beat a lot of teams. More points. More points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of six zero. Six zero. But I mean, really, that don't mean anything either. He could be just, you know, working on them, doing some things. You know what I mean? So you he never know. Be. You know, but. I think Bama looks good. You know, Bama is Bama. You know, we're looking forward to playing them in the playoffs. You know, I know they're going to be full <laughs> strength, right? Nobody missing that week. <laughs> yeah. I'm but right I, there. I, I, I mean, yeah, Coach Lane is a great coach. So, What's I mean, I grade? give him – I give him an A. He good. I give you, you – know, I give I Coach – Look good. Coach Lane a B-plus as well because, again, for me, Bama hasn't really, like, played anybody – that grade for me will change this week when they play Tigers and then when they when they you know for that final report card for me when they play APOC when they play tag, yeah. Tigers because they haven't really played you know right. game people yeah. um, maybe those scores too those six so sometimes when you play players <laughs> that you know and that's this is in any sport that really isn't on your level you have a tendency to play down right it just happens naturally because mm-hmm. in your mind you feel like man I already won the game you tend to play down but when you play players that you know on your level it forces you to you know, play at a higher level. So I wouldn't get too caught up in, you know, those scores. Six, so I it really don't be now. Win is a win, you know. It is, but yeah, that, that, that's my <laughs> that's a that's a grade you get in this class, Coach Lane. Rebels, um, Coach Coach Billy, Coach Arnold, what what is their grade? I give them an A. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't even yeah. think we predicted Rebels that high at the beginning of the season. We I didn't. Think they were like seven, in the middle six, somewhere. Seven. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, they look good, and they're confident, too. I was talking to Coach Will, mm-hmm. and I, he yeah. feels like they're going to beat primetime. I mean, as any coach should, but, you know, he's got his whole scheme, so I'm excited to see that game. Me I think too. that should be game of the week, too, along with – yeah, the they're spotlight of, the spotlight, oh, they they're spotlight, spotlight of the week. They're spotlight of the week, yeah. That's going to be a good game. Um, For me, I definitely give them a A- minus because, again, it's going to be these next few weeks for me, for them, but they've been doing a phenomenal job. So you guys get an A- minus in this class on that progress report. Um, Arsenal, Coach Craig, what's his grade? They look good. Yeah. You know, when they lose, they don't lose by a lot. Arsenal looks good. You know, they communicate. Um, their morale is always up. You know, you can, you can always tell a lot by a team when they get scored on and their morale after that. Yeah. You know, and Arsenal is always upbeat no matter what. I, I Like I said, they got a lot of experience, and they look good. Look for them in the playoffs. You know, they might mm-hmm. upset somebody. Oh, I think so. Yeah. For me, Coach Craig Gray is definitely a solid A. Um, again, just a team that's been off chilling. Not chilling, but just a whole year. Come yeah. back, busting heads still. I, I a in my class. Um, Stallions, Coach Gates, what's his grade? Uh, I give him a B plus. They look good. Yeah. They look good. Stallions look good. I mean, their line is just, man, it's nothing like seeing it in person. Yeah. <laughs> when they don't feel their line and you yeah. back there, it's like. For me, Coach Gates' grade in my class is an A minus. Um, I just want to see him recruit more position players and more because he's got everything else and he's got yes. that quarterback now so that but he's he's phenomenal job stallions are not the same team so for me it's a yeah, minus um x factor uh coach bird um you know <laughs> you know they're a new team i haven't really got to see too too many of their games um, so I, there was no, I really didn't have no expectation for them being that they're a new team. You know, I, I didn't know either way, um, based off the record. I mean, I give the coach maybe a B, okay. C plus a B. Yeah. In my um, class, coach bird, I was given you a C, a C only because he has the athletes. They are new, but he just has to adjust them. But I get not a 2.0 C. He's got like a 2.3 C, like a 2.3, you know, um, you know, gonna give him a 2.5. That's, no, because that's a 2.5 C. is eligible. You got to at least have a 2.5 to be eligible. Okay, 2.5 C, Coach Bird, because okay, you need to be eligible, eligible to play. But because um, he has the athletes and he's um, and he's they're new and they're still adjusting. But I think by by the end of this season, by next season, that grade should come up in this class. Okay. Um, Lady Warriors, Coach Reggie. Um, I give Coach a, a B. Okay. Um, I really did expect more this season from the Warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, he did lose some players, though, right? Like some key players, Puerto Rico. No, that's DOA. Oh, that's, oh, she was on DOA. They want the red hair uh-huh. for Warriors. Yeah. She played for DOA, not the Warriors. Right. Okay. But I know the Warriors, um, they did lose one or two players. I don't know. They're athletic. I just don't think something isn't gelling. You know, something isn't gelling. They don't really mm-hmm. communicate either, and I think that's huge in any sport. You got to communicate. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They don't do a good job of communicate on defense. They're a team that when you score on them, their morale is down. You know that you got to be. And I think once they work on the little things, they'll be a better team. You know, and I think the coach got to put them in, again, positions to be successful. You know, certain players shouldn't be doing certain things. You get what I'm saying? So I get it, yeah. Once I you change that. certain things, you know, some players got it, some don't. And that's okay, but put your team in a position to be successful. Or at least give you an opportunity to win. Yeah. Uh, For me, Coach Reggie is at a B- minus right now in my class. Um, for all the reasons that you said, basically, especially the last part of that reason. So I think he'll, tw- I just want to see him tweak one or two more things. And because he's such a superstar athlete, he was yes. like Mr. All Star, this, da, 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 da. Yes. But sometimes just because you are it doesn't always. So uh, for me, he's got to be minus. But all right, DOA, Coach Mack, what's his grade right now? I want to ask you first. What's your grade? For me, Coach Mack, right now, um, I'm going to say a, a D plus um and only because I, it's just not it's just not what i expected and he has the athletes and so again this is your midweek progress report so you still have time to bring that grade up before the semester ends but right now for me it's a d plus for coach matt because he has all the skills that I'm, i don't know why the execution isn't there when he was able to execute for so many like year after year before yeah. i mean i give him a c i give him a c but yeah, I, I agree totally with you said. I don't get it. Like, I see them, and it's just the speed that they have. Mm-hmm. He 
just got to put people in a position to, to be successful. That's all it is. Yeah, NCB Wolfpack. They got like six coaches on their roster. I looked at that. They got like six. Six of y'all on the roster. They got like six of them registered. And I was like, well, I ain't never seen none of them. Where y'all at? Yeah, but anyway. Well, we played them. They didn't have a coach. Right. That's how I'm like, how they got six uh, registered coaches. So, so where was your grade? Or you want me to go first? Because I'm not to say it. It's it's like, where are y'all at? NCB <laughs> coaches, all six of y'all. F, 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 F. Y'all are failing school. Y'all about to be enrolled in night school, summer school, and yeah. they're about to be uh, staying back a grade. Um, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Storm. Storm. Coach Donnie and her staff, Where? what's their grade oh, in your man. class? Um, I'm going to give them a C as well. I get Coach yeah, C minus. I definitely expected the Storm to be better. They did few players yeah um but yes yeah, something is i mean the morale is there though i mean mm -hmm. they're high energy every game mm -hmm. their teammates on the sideline are amping them up cheering them up but it's like i mean to me they don't have a lot of speed um and so i think that hurts you when your wide receivers are you know kind of slow and the quarterback, when she does throw it, I mean, it's floating in the air so long that, you know what I mean, like mm. anybody could attack it. So I think, like, they just need to change a few things. I mean, if the long ball isn't going, you know, let's do some short routes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's me. I give him a C. I give Donnie a C. And yeah, she got, she got some other coaches too with her, right? Yeah, Donnie so it's a collaborative grade. Okay. It's a, oh, it's yeah, a group all, grade. So a I, I gave them a C minus. So in my class, you guys got a C minus. Um, and then Code Red, Coach Grant, and that that one coach over there, he got I forgot his name, but um, you know you rowdy when Coach Grant tell you to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was so oh, amp. I was like, my gosh. <laughs> coach Grant was like, calm down. You can cost us a penalty. <laughs> Uh, I give Coach a D. Okay. Yeah, I just, I mean, if stuff isn't working, you, you, you just got to, you just got to switch it up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but shout out to the, the cold red players. The players are there. I mean, yeah. it don't matter. They down 6-0, 40-0. I mean, they're communicating. Their morale is up. Like, because it's hard to lose every week and still want to show up. And want to show up, and they still show up, and they still play. That's what I'm saying. Yes, People don't like, get about them girls. They show up. When we beat them 40-0, yeah. they was in the parking lot cursing each other out, you know, pointing out mistakes. Like, yo, the next game, we need to do this, that. You can only respect that because nobody hates to lose every week. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm just hoping they get a win soon. But I got to give the coach a D. Yeah, for me, I gave um, the coaching – Team in my class, you guys got a C minus, but it's it's, it's, it's a thin one. So um, yeah, yeah I gotta get a C yeah, minus. They're short on players too. They, they don't have a deep roster. Mm -mm. Like I know this past weekend, uh, they only had like one sub. There was only one girl on the sideline. I was just yeah, like, play man, both ways. Like, they're tired, so they're playing both ways. They got one girl who runs the ball a lot. She was worn out, so. It sounded like us for eight co-ed. We playing both ways. This is yeah. good cardio. I like it like that. But in contact, that's a different story when you play playing both ways. You get yeah. hit both ways. So, all right, cool. But we'll talk about, um, um, let's go to closing announcements. Um, so we're going to the closing announcements, and we are going to start with uh, Lynn Lewis. Mm. Um, so you guys know Lynn Lewis is coming up. Definitely want to make sure you're down there for the formats, five, sevens, eights, girls. Um, Palm Coast, Florida, April 30th through May 2nd. It is a sanctioned tournament for the $200,000. And, um, yeah, and if you guys didn't know, uh, I know some people were having trouble finding rooms at Airbnbs, but Mashonda did do room blocks at the Hilton Garden Inn. And lovely rooms, and it's 104 at night, so make sure you guys get your rooms on that room block. Um, do you have that scheduled up, that butter sent us? Which one? Because um, we want to give a shout-out to... We want to we wanna give um, a shout-out to the schedule okay. for um, these ladies. Oh, yeah! So, shout-out to my girl Butter in uh, Atlanta, Phoenix, uh, tackle football. In my Butter um, voice. Hey, Butter! <laughs> so May 1st is their season opener. Um, and they'll be playing at North Cobb High School. North Cobb. Cobb. North Cobb. North Cobb. Okay. 
High School. So their season opener will be against Washington at North Cobb High School at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see. You know, I've never been to a women's tackle game. Yeah. So I'm excited to see how that – how that's going to be. And then May 8th, they play Mississippi at home again at North Cobb at 7. And then I guess they're going on the road to play against Washington. Mm-hmm. Uh, May 15th, May 27th, May 22nd, they're on the road again. And then their next home game against Alabama is June 19th. Yeah. At North Cobb at 7 o'clock. So if you can check them out, come out, check them out. I'm excited. Check them out. I'm excited, too, to just see them girls hitting. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I'll be like, oh, no, yeah. protect the boobs. I can't be getting hit like that. They so it's not excited. that bad, though. Pat. That's not hard. That's not hard. The pads, you don't really feel it. I ain't trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> uh, okay. um, and then let's the um, <laughs> tournament. So eight women tournament, the coaches draft tournament. So don't forget. Oh. And an announcement with the coaches draft tournament is that actually Coach Lane had to pull out because of schedule conflict. He has a tackle game that day, so they're oh. gonna get another coach. But oh, the rest okay. of the coaches are still there. So make sure you ladies signed up for the eight women contact coaches draft tournament and then um we're gonna close out on this just a little a cute little trivia that she didn't know was coming she didn't know clue that i was gonna throw this to her now we're clear we're closing out y'all but um which team in the league has you know talking about coach red they only have they don't have that many players but let's go to the opposite of that which team in the league has the most players registered on their roster the most the most like deep they deep tigers deep is a team deeper than Tigers. <laughs> Tigers and Rebels actually tied at 32 yeah. um, <laughs> players registered on their roster. So. Speaking of Tigers, is that game of the week? Yes. Tigers and Bama. Bama game of the week, y'all. Week and they play at 11-20. We're going to be right there in oh, the stands. Yeah, I'm going to have my coffee mug. Coffee. I'll have my coffee <laughs> mug <laughs> and my umbrella right there for that whole game. So any club to close on announcements, Harlem? Uh, no. Uh, stay blessed, stay beautiful, spread love, do what you love, love what you do, love what you do, and butter, we miss you, you. she'll be back next week, y'all, have a good night, and that's it for Hills to Cleats. That place, where light and dark begin to touch, that's where miracles start, light it up, aim is the light.